Right, good evening, everyone. I did this last year, and this, anyway. Right, um, I'm going to talk tonight about abstraction by the rule of 10. How many dots on this slide? Wow, OK. Five. This one? That one? Yeah, getting harder now. Right, so we're good at recognizing up to about eight to 10 things. Um, after that, the cognitive load becomes distracting. Uh, you are trying to make sure that you have everything in mind before you proceed to the detail of comprehending the totality. So how does this impact your code? Sometimes things get too big to understand. Um, there are too many things going on to apprehend in one glance. So this is important when you look at some code, you want to minimize the cognitive load of actually understanding it. If seeing it all simply gets in the way, you have friction. So C++ has a number, of, a number of abstraction mechanisms to assist with this. Think of them like powers of 10. So our first two abstraction mechanisms are the object and the function. Okay, object abstracts the, concept, the uh, content of memory to identifiers. Function abstracts the content of memory to identifiers as well. Uh, but the first is for state and the second is for execution. So look at this function. Yeah, all right. It has lots of state and it has lots of execution. Mm. Did it start off like this? No. Um, it started off like this. Easy, easy. And then little by little it grew. How should we split it up? So multiple functions. Part one, part two. We need better identifiers. Finding those identifiers often stops us from dividing something. Or we can group bits of interacting state together and we can form our next abstraction, the class. All the data that interacts together can live in the private interface, and all the code that schedules that interaction can go in the public interface. Of course, a class can get large. Look at, look at this interface. Look at it. What does it do? So this function interacts with these member data. This function interacts with these member data. This function interacts with these member data, and this function interacts with these member data. This function interacts with these member data. The lines. The many angled ones, they are rising. Obey Cthulhu! Obey Cthulhu! <laughs> right, hands up who thinks naming is easy. <laughs> Ivan thinks naming is easy. I didn't think, no, I didn't think so. Nobody thought it, really. Come on, Ivan, really? Naming is easy? That's a functional programmer speaking, ladies and gentlemen, a functional programmer. <laughs> Identifying is easy, naming is hard, but we need to find a name for these things, or we will end up with a giant and incomprehensible interface. More than 10 functions in your API. Too big. Divide it. Give it two new names. So we have three abstraction mechanisms so far, the object, the function, the class, the namespace is the next one to think about. Oh, I'm running out of time. Right. A lovely bunch of classes in a namespace, but we still have all these classes in a single namespace. What should we do? Nest the namespaces like this. So now we have a few nested namespaces. Is this really a separate abstraction mechanism, though? Surely all we've done is group things together and give them even longer names. The only difference between a class and a namespace is instantiation and access level and when you think about it in this way. So I'm going to set that one aside and consider modules instead, fresh for C++20. The module is the next level of abstraction. It allows us to group declarations together into a single place and separate the implementation details away from the client. A module contains a whole bunch of classes, hiding away a whole pile of functions and data. At this point in the talk a while ago, I would have started talking about include files, but this is the new age of wonder. So am I saying that modules should contain no more than 10 classes? Classes should contain no more than 10 member functions and 10 member data. Functions should contain no more than 10 lines and 10 objects. Am I saying that? No. But what I am saying is that at some point, you need to start thinking about increasing the resolution of your abstraction. And that point is when you have 10 things to think about. 20 member data in your class? OK. If you can identify it all at a glance, then that's great. But at least think about it. The number of things is not directly related to comprehensibility, but it is a contributing factor that is easy to measure simply by counting. 10 variables in your function, divide your function into two, or group your data into a class. 10 functions in your class, divide it into two classes. 10 classes, 
use a namespace to collect more related, strongly related classes together. Or better still, use a module to identify a blob of functionality, and that is abstraction by the rule of 10. 